So how are all of you guys doing tonight? Welcome to Real Estate 101, where I kind of just open it up to whatever you might be, uh, any challenges you might have, any uh, situations you want to run by, any thoughts or um, input. So let's hear it, guys. What do you need help with? How are you doing? What can I do to help you? So I'm part of a coaching group called Workman Success. In there were a few scripts and one is called Prime Seller Lead Scripts. And one is called, uh, I don't know what LP Mama means, but LP Mama Master Script for Buyers. And let me see what the third one is. It's called the Magic Script, which LP Mama, I just realized stands for Location, Price, Motivation, agency, mortgage, and appointment. So let me see if I can actually share my screen and you guys can see this script and then I will share them in our um, Facebook groups. So this is an awesome script and this one is basically trying to talk to a potential buyer about what areas they may be interested in or, or uh, what maybe they're a um, cold lead, maybe they are a buyer that you've um, received information on, they've called off a sign or things like that. So this is actually maybe looks like a sign call. So we can, you guys can, can you guys all see this? All right, so as you guys can see, this is actually, Jennifer, let's you and I role play. We can read as we go along, okay? Okay. You be the agent, I'll be the client, all right? So you can, okay. all right? Uh, Hi. Hi, this is Verl with the Workman team. How may I help you? Well, why don't we, why don't you use your own name? <laughs> What's that? Use your own name. Oh, <laughs> okay. Hi, this is Jennifer with EXP Realty. How may I help you? Hi there, I'm calling on a home that you have listed in Lincoln. Oh, that's a great home. While I gather the information on that home, I just need to ask you a couple of quick questions. First, can I get your name? Yeah, my name is Sally. Great, thanks. Sally, is that the general area you are looking at? Um, yeah, I, I want to um, get closer to my parents who live in Del Webb, so I'm looking for something in the Lincoln area. Okay. Um, so, uh, great. Um, what other areas are you looking in? Uh, I'm looking like Lincoln Crossing, maybe Foskett Ranch, um, maybe 12 Bridges. All great areas. Okay, I have the information pulled up on Keswick. What can I tell you about the home? Well, what's the price on that house? House is listed at four hundred twenty-five thousand. Is that the price range you're comfortable with? Um. Well, possibly. I'd like to see if maybe I could find something a little bit less. Are you thinking four hundred, three fifty, three twenty-five k? Oh, sorry. Are you thinking four hundred? Um. Well, I'm not. No, I'm not sure. Three fifty. Mm, no. 325? Yeah, about 325. That would work. That's great. How soon are you looking to get into a home? Oh, in the next few months. Great. Now, do you currently own a home or are you renting? We are renting right now and our lease is up in March. Terrific. How long have you been looking for a home? Oh, we just started a few weeks ago. Great. Have you been inside any homes yet? Uh, yeah, we've been in, the, yeah, yeah, we have. Okay. Uh, how have you been getting in to see these homes? Well, we just call the agent on the sign or we call my brother who's an agent and he gets us in. Oh, that's great. By the way, I don't know if you know this, but I am a buyer's agent. I'm not sure how much you know about the home buying process, but do you know how a buyer's agent works? No, I don't. Well, <clears throat> my job is to help you find the best deal and truly represent you in the purchase of a home. A lot of people just call the number on the sign 
generally that is the listing agent and their job is to take care of the best interest of the seller. Most people call and hope the agent is looking out for their best interest as the buyer. But the reality is the listing agent is focused on getting the best price and most money for the seller. The great news is that it doesn't cost you anything to have you represent you as a buyer's agent. When you find your next home, the seller pays. How does that sound? Wow, really? That sounds awesome. Sally, we have a lot of homes that come on the market in that price range. I'll make sure to let you know about houses as you get a little closer to the end of your lease. Would it be okay with you if I let, oops, that's you, never mind. Agent. <laughs> uh, would it be okay with you if I let you know as we get the new inventory that meets the specific criteria in a home that you're looking for? Sure. Great, what is the best email for you? Sally at gmail.com. Is there anyone else you'd like me to send property information to? Sure, to my husband. Okay, great, what's his email? Joe at gmail.com. Great, is the 949 number the best number to keep in touch with you on? Yes, that's my cell phone. Okay, great. Just for my records, what is your current address? Can you tell? Can you tell me more about the specific things you're looking for in a home? How many bedrooms, bathrooms, garage size, square footage, yard? Are there any special needs or requirements you have for the home? Out of curiosity, Sally, have you had a chance to meet with a lender to know exactly how much you can afford once you are actively looking? No, I haven't done that yet. If it's okay with you, I'll shoot you an email with a link to a couple of lenders, rock star lenders we recommend, and their online applications. They can answer all of your questions and help you through the whole process. I'd also like to set you up in our MLS so that you will see new homes in real time as they hit the market. And I'll let you know as we get new listings on the team, sometime even before the, they hit the MLS, which is considered an off-market property. And those are, sometimes are the best deals because there's no competition and no bidding wars. Would it be okay if I kept in touch with you as you get closer so when you're ready to get inside any home, you can simply give me a call? Sure. Great, I'll shoot you an email. What is, when is the best time to follow up with you? Okay, so that basically took us, that was a buyer, right? And took us to the appointment. Great job on the little uh, add-ins there. It seems a little lengthy to me to keep them on the phone that long, but. It doesn't, it doesn't, because the longer you can keep them on the phone, what do you think that creates? That creates more, uh, that the more, the longer you can keep them on the phone, the more engaged they are, right? Right, that's true. Like you're probably actually on the phone that long or you're skipping some of those steps, which means you're ending up with clients who are not, um, you're not getting anywhere, right? You're not getting appointments. Right. So like for me, if I can get them all the way through that, I know that I've got probably a 90% chance of getting a good client. Okay. And many times people will, if you saw, we engaged them, right? Yes. What is it you're looking for? Like the only thing that we would do differently than what it's showing is in right in here yes we want to make sure to get answers to those questions right, right make sure we gave them time to answer those but if they took the time to answer those then they're now more engaging aren't they absolutely it's a great script it actually this really helps me out um because sometimes i get stuck you know because i know i could sound like it sounds like they're in a hurry sometimes so you know, this script has some great questions. Absolutely. So I wonder if I can actually, I will, uh, let me see if I can actually put this in the chat somehow. I don't know if I can actually drop the PDF. Let me see if I can. Well, what I'll do is I will put it in your guy. I'll put it in the um, Facebook group so you guys can have it. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. So what was the second part of this script? This is a seller script, okay? So let's see, who wants to role play with me? Kevin, are you there, Kevin? Okay, who else? Danielle, Chris? Sure. All right, Chris, here we go, ready? 
So you kind of came in part way on the buyer script. So what this is, these are scripts that I found in Workman Success Systems, which is a coaching group that I'm in. And um, I'm gonna put these scripts all in our Facebook group so you guys can access them a little bit later. We just, uh, Jennifer and I just went through and did a buyer script. And now you and I, Chris, will do the seller script. I am going to be the client. You are going to be the agent, okay? Sounds good. Can you see it now? Yep. Okay, good. All right, I'm interested in selling my home. Oh, um, great. Um, my name's Christopher Jeremy. Can I get your name? Um, yes, let's see. Okay, I'll just go ahead and answer the questions on the other one it showed me as the client. But, um, my name is uh, Sally Johnson. Oh, nice to meet you, Sally Johnson. I'm glad that you're able to give me a call. Um, let's make sure I have all your contact information just uh, in case we get disconnected. I've got some bad cell, cell service sometimes, and I want to make sure that um, I have your information in case we get disconnected. Is that okay? Sure. All right. Um, can, I, can you spell your first and last name for me? Yeah, it's Sally, S-A-L-L-Y. Great. Johnson, J-O-H-N-S-O-N. Awesome. Now, is there anyone else um, on title with you? Uh, yeah, my partner, uh, Joe. Joe. Awesome, Joe. Okay. Does he have the same last name as you? He does. Great. And um, I didn't catch the phone number here. So uh, could you give me that one more time, please? Or yeah, 916-555-1212. Great. Now, Sally, where's the exact address of your property? Um, it's 1275 Main Street in Rockland. Awesome. And that number that you gave me, is that the best number or is this the best number to reach you? Uh, this is the best number to reach me. Great. Okay. Um, and I see that popping up on my phone. Uh, do you have an email address as well? Um, yeah, it's sally at gmail.com. Great. Okay, so just a couple questions. Um, you know, where do you plan on moving to? Um, I'm moving out of state. Awesome. Do you know exactly where? I mean, have you have you do you have an idea of what state that you're going to or? Um, yeah, I'm thinking about going to Tennessee. Tennessee. That's way on the other side of the uh, U.S. Have you seen any homes out there? Yeah, I have. My sister-in-law moved out there, so I'm I'm thinking that that might be a better place to move. Awesome. Um, have you seen any homes out there? Like, have you done any kind of research? Uh, I have a little bit, not a whole lot. I'm, I want to sell my home and then I'm going to stay with my sister for a bit, my sister-in-law, um, until I find uh, the perfect home. Okay. All right. Um, now, have you done any, uh, have you thought about your price point? Um, you know, what, what you'd like to uh, sell your home for? Um, you know what? I looked on Zillow and Zillow says it's worth about 450. Okay. Um, I'm glad that you took at least the step to go look at Zillow. There are some things that, uh, Zillow automatically generates and, uh, not necessarily the most accurate data. Um, let's see here. It's a good, idea. let's see here. Um, okay. Well, what I can do, and this is not, this is off script, Marguerite, sorry. <laughs> um, I'd be willing to uh, generate a report for you to give you a better accurate picture of what your home could possibly sell for. Um, I know that uh, you said you want to move out to Tennessee and be with your sister-in-law. Is there any other reason why you know you want to move out of state or why, why specifically Tennessee? Is there other family members there? Is work calling you? Uh, I have family there. Oh, okay. Oh, family there. Great. Let's work on um, following the script here a little bit because there's so okay. many method behind <laughs> this madness, right? Yeah. How soon would you like to be out of your current home? Uh, I think I'd like, to, I'd like to sell by the end of the year. Okay. And out of curiosity, why are you looking to sell? Well, I just want to, I think I'm ready to get out of California and go, <laughs> go live a little closer to my family. Yeah. Uh, have you given any thought to the three things that are going to be most important to you in selecting an agent? Uh, 
I, I definitely want someone who's going to be aggressive in marketing my house because I want to get a good price for it because I need every penny possible out of it. And um, somebody who really is familiar with the area and knows the area really well. Um, I think that's probably it. Okay. Uh, do you currently have uh, any type of agreeing agreement signed with an agent, a listing or a buying agreement? Uh, I have a buying agreement with the agent out in Tennessee, but nothing here. She told me to find an agent out here. I see. Yeah. Um, do you know the current balance on your home? Is there a second or what do you owe on it? Um, I have a first that I owe like about 200 on and then a second uh, for 75,000. Okay. Um, each of these questions gets you closer. I don't know if I'm supposed to read that. Let's see what else there is. Okay, here are two different ways to close for the appointment. Okay. Okay, so we'll go ahead and go through these. <clears throat> Everything sounds great. I think it makes sense that we get together. Here's what I recommend we do. Let's set up a time to meet in my office or at your house and go over this home selling process. We will do a market analysis and discuss the marketing strategy to get your home sold quickly. How does that sound? Okay, so do you see why we followed the script instead of what you were trying to do? Yeah, sorry. Yeah, but you do you understand why now? Yep. Okay. So because a lot of times we're so quick to say, hey, I'll send you a CMA. Mm -hmm. And if we send a CMA, what are the odds that we get an appointment? Zero. Right. So we're always really quick to shoot out too much information, talk too much, and offer too much. Got it. Right. And so that's why it's really important that you kind of follow along the lines with a lot of these scripting. Now, it doesn't have to sound so scripted. I know that's the biggest reason why people... Uh, are hesitant to use scripts, but can you imagine if you guys got together and role played and practiced these scripts, how if you practice them like 50 times, what's gonna happen when you're in front of a client? It's gonna sound like it comes naturally and you're gonna understand the process a little bit more, okay? So the second one is a close for the appointment script for somebody who's looking to buy a home. So we'll role play this one real quickly, okay? So go ahead and be the agent. This is a buyer. Would you like to go look at houses again next week to see if we can find the one to buy? Yeah, that would be great. Would you prefer to go at the beginning of the week or at the end of the week? Um, I think I'd rather look towards the end of the week. Okay, I have Thursday and Friday available. Um, Thursday is better for me. Okay, Thursday is great. Morning or afternoon? Um, I think afternoon works best. I have a one o'clock or a three o'clock available. Okay, let's do three. Great. So we're ready to go on Thursday, three o'clock, right? I'll send you an invite. Perfect. Okay. So do you guys see how there really is kind of a method way when you are role playing with people where you want to get as much information as you possibly can so that you can create that camaraderie, right? So like Jennifer earlier felt like the script was too long. She felt like it was a lot of, of talking as you went along. But can you see how the more engaging and the more you can get them to talk and answer questions, the higher the likelihood is that you'll get an appointment. You understand yeah, that? Yeah, I can totally see that. Yes. Because the first like two or three questions, they're kind of you know, a, a little hesitant, you know, when I'm calling them. Um, and so they seem kind of impatient because, you know, they probably get phone calls from other people as well. But, um, but I see the more questions you ask, you're building that rapport and, you know, it's easier to, you know, have them make an appointment with you. You know, they're open to that. Well, and the thing to keep in mind is that the more questions that you ask, the more engaging that they are. Sometimes people won't answer questions. Like if I get somebody on the phone who's like, yep, nope, nope, okay, but all right, you know, that's really impatient with me, I'll say, hey, if, is this not a good time? Is there a better time that I could give you a call where we could kind of dig into how I can best help you? 
Yes, I've used that before. I actually used that today. And so on one of one of the leads. So yeah, Thursday works best for him because he was busy. Yeah. So keep that in mind. And then you have to make sure that you honor that follow up. Yeah, absolutely. Right? Because that's really important. And so this is the value of practicing these scripts. Now, most agents don't practice. And so let me ask you this, a baseball player that has a 300 batting score means that they've gone to bat 10 times and three times were hit, hit the ball. How much time do you think a professional athlete spends practicing? A lot. Yep, probably 90%. What'd you say, Chris? 90%. I was just gonna say at least 90% of their time or more is spent practicing. In fact, I was just watching a documentary on Larry Bird, for those of you guys who follow basketball. And Larry Bird, for his entire youth, high school and middle school, made it his goal to shoot 500 free throws every day. Wow. 500 every day. Now, you can see he was not, by all means, not the most talented basketball player you will hear people say. He was not the most talented basketball player, right? He was clumsy and kind of overgrown, a lot of things like that. But he worked past that. He didn't really have natural ability, so to speak, like they say. But he practiced so much that he could do it in his sleep. And of course, my favorite quote of all time is the famous Michael Jordan quote. Let me go find it for you because I have this on my wall. And it is my favorite quote of all time. I've had it on my wall since I started in real estate. It says, I've missed more than 9,000 shots in my career. I've lost almost 300 games. 26 times I've been trusted to take the game winning shot and missed. I've failed over and over and over again in my life. And that is why I succeed. That's my I love that. All time. I have that poster in my office in Roseville. And since I started in real estate, I've had it on my wall where I can see it every day when I'm at work. So I want to get one. I love that. Yep. You can go online and order a poster. They're pretty cool. So that's the thing, you guys, is that you practice, practice, practice until you can do it in your sleep, right? And so when you take these scripts, and again, I'm going to upload them all into the Facebook groups. So you guys can take them. I encourage you to get together and practice these and do them over and over again. Practice being the agent, practice being the client. When you're role-playing for the record, always let them win. Like you don't have to try to be a jerk or be a difficult client or give them tons of objections because the truth is most of the time, clients don't aren't difficult with you. I mean, truthfully, they're not. Some are, some are jerks, those ones are let go. But for the most part, you just want to practice, practice, practice until you can say these same lines in their sleep. Like for me, if I were to get on the phone and role play with you, I've done this so many thousands of times that I don't need to really follow scripts anymore, but I've practiced these scripts thousands of times. I've done them with clients thousands, literally thousands of times. Find someone to practice with, practice in the mirror, practice with your dog, practice with your kids, your spouse, your friend, another agent, anybody. But practice, practice, practice until you can say them so easily that you don't even blink. So what kind of questions do you have? What kind of challenges are you having? I'd like to hear you guys speak up. This is to be interactive with class, not just Marjorie talking. Let's hear it. Sorry, what was the question you asked? My question is, what kind of challenges are you guys having? Are you doing the role playing? Are you practicing any of these scripts? Do you have scripts that you're using? I have, I had scripts, but I mean, I kind of went off the beaten path and messed up this last one with you. So well, no, that's okay. But I mean, do you have ones that you use in practice? Yes. Uh, I have some great ones from Kevin Cooper. Perfect. So what you may want to do is you can share those in the group too, if you're comfortable with that. And what I would encourage you to do is get a group together, even if you guys do it via zoom, like we are right now and make it your goal to spend one hour or more a week in role playing. Like we talked about earlier, how much time does a sports athlete practice? 90% of the time. 
How much time are you currently practicing right now? Anybody want to speak up about that? I'm not practicing the script at all myself. Marguerite, I'm sorry, I'm getting my mic turned on all of What? I'm sorry, you're cutting out a little bit, Kevin. What'd you say? I couldn't get my mic turned on all of them. But anyway, this is Steven. I am here and I'm listening. And I, I haven't, I've done a little bit of scripts, but not much. I've been just trying to do a lot of training videos and, and stuff like this. Mm -hmm. so, so. Okay. One of the problems I have is clients or prospective clients, you know, talking to you. And giving you the idea that they're very serious, and yet um, you, know, you know they don't. They talk to you, and then you they don't return your call, or call you, or you know they just kind of mail on you. So, do you think that if you utilize the scripts we just went through, you might have better success? Yes, absolutely. Cool. So, how many of you guys are willing? to start practicing these scripts with either each other or somebody at home or anyone like that? I am, absolutely. Awesome, Kevin? Yes, I, I would, and I, I actually have a partner that would probably be willing to also. Perfect. So. I can't understand Kevin at all. I know he's, you're kind of fading in and out, Kevin. It's a little, I'm not sure. It's uh, I don't know. I'm standing right by my computer. So. Oh, now you sound great. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> I'm like, I got my face right almost on the computer. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay, and what about um, you, Danielle? We haven't heard from you tonight. Yes, I am willing to. I've just started. I've been in this for a week, so I'm not All quite. Right. Congratulations. Look at you, brand new agent. Way to, way to jump right in, girl. So that's fantastic. So the best thing you can do as a new agent is you can learn this out of the gate so you don't develop bad habits like some of us, like me. Right? <laughs> right? And, yeah. and the thing is, if you start practicing these now, I mean, you guys laugh when I say practice in the mirror, practice with your dog. I literally did. I would have my dog, Rascal, <laughs> sit right here. He looks at me like I'm a crazy lady. But I would literally say, okay, Rascal, so where do you want to live, right? <laughs> <laughs> You'd be like, I want a mansion doghouse. <laughs> but the fact is, is that if you keep practicing these, you're going to, you guys all feel uncomfortable and you feel like really hokey right now because it feels awkward when you don't know exactly what to say. But when you start practicing it over and over again until you can say it in your sleep, then when the situation arises, you don't make mistakes like you're probably making now by not setting appointments. And what we start to do is we start to think kind of like you said, Jennifer, where I feel like I'm talking too much or there's too much, it, it takes too long. And that entire conversation you and I had was less than five minutes. Yes, it was. Right? But it yes. feels longer because you feel awkward. Because yes, exactly. That's exactly it. Yes. And so that's the importance of doing these role playing as much as you possibly can. You know, like I said, get, I don't care who you get, if you get each other, if you, I'm sure that all of you guys have already said you're willing to do role-playing. You guys could set up a little call where you do it together, a Zoom call or just on the phone. Or, you know, if you're local to the area, a little meet and greet and do some role-playing. I know that on our team, we're gonna start doing this more when we get back from Dallas. Um, so, you know, this is where, most agents don't want to practice. And what I hear many of them say is, oh, well, I'm, I'm just, I'm better when I'm in front of a client. And do, are you really? Like, can you imagine somebody like Larry Bird or Michael Jordan saying they're going to blow off practice this week and just go to the championship game without practicing? Like, that's not how it works, right? And the people who make the most money in the world actually are athletes and celebrities. And what do they spend more time? What do actors and athletes spend time doing? Practice, 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 right. And as real estate agents, if you look at the top agents who make the most amount of money, you will see that they have spent years and days and hours, can't tell you how much time they've spent practicing their craft and working to get better and better and better at what they do. So you guys have the opportunity. I'm going to put all these scripts in the Facebook group. And I encourage you guys to get together and do some role playing. Thank you Thanks, so much. Thanks, Margaret. All right, you guys have a great night. You, you too. too. Thanks, Margaret.